Welcome back to Look Who's Talking. Welcome back. It's Look Who's Talking with Zach and Zach and producer Sam. Year of reflection. It's 2020. A new decade. A new year. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. A happy new year to all of our fans and friends of the pod. Shout out to the Overby family. Hashtag fam of the pod. Shout out to the Bogosians. Fam of the pod. We're excited to be here. We're excited to get it going. And breaking news as well, Zach. Love we it. got t-shirts, Merch, folks. people. Merch is online. <laughs> www.lwtpod.com. Tune in. Go to our shop. Click the shop tab and order one of our black shirts. It's the shirt you didn't even know you wanted. Producer Sam, thank you so much. You got the shirts. You created them. You ordered them. You did the dirty work. You got your hands dirty. And you came out with some great merch. We got them ready to go. Hand delivery <laughs> by us three. Ready. The real treat is you get to interact with us because we'll drop it off at your house. Yeah, exactly. Zach, yeah Zach said it there. Uh, if you are in the greater Austin area, if you're in Waco or San Antonio, this doesn't really apply to you. But if you're in the greater, greater Austin area and you want a T-shirt, when you check out, make sure you hit that hand delivery yeah. uh, option. We don't want to charge you for shipping. We'll uh, meet you somewhere and get you your merchandise. Other than that, uh, just, you know, it's like five bucks for shipping. We'll pop that into the, the mail and that should be there in just a couple days after you... Uh, after you order we'll listen to your sports takes we'll maybe you know buy you a cup of coffee yeah talk about your favorite team your least favorite team get you on the pod maybe if your if your coach is leaving your favorite team shout out the baylor fans shout out colton tucker but uh you know it's been a while the look who's talking guys we've had uh we've had christmas holidays creep in um shout out to both the fans as eb said we've had the new year ring in shout out to the new decade Mm. 2020 um, any New Year's resolutions from the guys here at Look Who Talking? Yes. TV, producer Sam, what do you got for the people? You know, I was, uh, you know, New Year's New Year's resolutions. It's a must-have. It's something that you need to do going into the New Year every year. And uh, I think with 2020, a new decade here, you got to have a New Year or New Decade resolution, Zach. Okay. You know, uh, for myself, I want to read five to ten books this year. Books about business, communication, how to be a good podcaster, whatever it is, uh, I want to read some books. I want to get in, you know, understand how to be a better human being on this planet, Zach. Expand the palate. Expand the palate. Expand the palate of life. Come on. Producer Sam, what do you got for us? Yeah, in I normally don't do New Year's resolutions. Neither this do year, I. I, I had to get into it, though, um, just to kind of try it. I actually got a head start in December just to oh. make sure that I kind of wanted to roll with it long term. Um, eating a little bit healthier, taking away some of the sugar. And getting in a little bit of strength training. I've played a lot of Ultimate, and with that, it was all cardio with just a little bit of um, like conditioning. But um, yeah, wife was really happy that uh, oh, yeah. I let her know I'll be lifting some weights and eating a little bit more protein in my diet. Let's go. So she, she's excited, and uh, I'm a little bit excited too. I, I like that feeling when the, the t-shirt sleeves kind of hug your bicep. Ah. Oh, Jack Let's producer go. Sam, come yeah, on! Now. I was gonna say, Let's go. Tweak the name, Jack producer <laughs> Sam. Here we Let's go. go. I'm uh, all about it. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm kind of with you, Sam. I usually don't do because then it means like that tw- was 2019 a complete failure right, because yeah. you're like setting up all these like giant expectations. Failure is never an answer, yeah. Zach. Yeah, exactly. Whether it's 2019 or 2020, but uh, piggybacking off of you, actually, ditto. I had it written down. Read more. I want to knock out. I want to try to knock out a book a month. Um, to expand the horizons um, outside of what I'm doing now, pop culture and sports. I want to I want to expand, learn something new out there. We want to be a little more well-rounded as a I'm human already being. an expert in sports. Simple as that, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't want to dwell on the small things. That's yeah. another thing. Yeah. I, uh, I want to be more stress-free. If, mm. if it's out of my control, let it be out of my control. Control the controllables. Exactly. It's a classic. It's a Word, classic. Words of advice here on Look Who's Talking. You didn't know you were going to get it, but you got it. Before we start talking <laughs> sports... Now listen, what passed us was the college football playoff. Who's holding the lipstick trophy that producer Sam alluded to at the beginning of the year? We had two really great matchups. Um, If you sprinted to the tube to watch the first one, you might have been let down. Tell us about the LSU Tigers, their team of destiny, and tell us about the Oklahoma Sooners. Some say they shouldn't have been there. Mm. The Big 12 is a mess. That's all we can say, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, Zach's got some hot takes about the Big 12 and the Mm -hmm. whole season, but... Wow, what a game. Um, Watch this game with producer Sam and then Jacob Baker, friend of the pod, actually bought the first Look Who's Talking shirt. So um, at the the Bogolo, watching the game, 
we had a couple beers. Uh, the beer of choice was the Thirsty Goat, which I think was was very reminiscent of what we were seeing with Joe Burrow, Thirsty for Tutties, the Thirsty Goat, Joe Burrow. Um, what you saw was complete annihilation. It was one of those games, though, that was so much fun to watch because of watching this LSU offense, Joe Brady's passing offense, and Joe Burrow put on a show for the audience in he, New Orleans. It was incredible. He scored some touchdowns, actually. Scored you, a couple if, touchdowns. If you tuned in at the right time, you might have found Not it. one, not two, not three, not four, all the way to eight. That's, eight that's touchdowns incredible. in the game, seven in the first half. Ugh. It was incredible to watch. This guy was uh, – this, this guy was, was something special. I think it solidified Burrow as being the best quarterback in the draft, obviously. But not only that, he's the shoe-in for the first pick in the draft. Um, he will yeah. be a Cincinnati Bengal. If the Bengals don't draft him, they got too much trust in Andy Dalton. But what you saw was this this receiving the receiving core for LSU, how dangerous they can be with the three. They got Marshall, Jefferson, and Chase. Uh, Chase won the Blinkoff. Um, you saw you saw the tight end Thaddeus Moss, who's who's Randy Moss's son. Um, he's another weapon that they got. Clyde Edwards Hilaire, who's a terrific running back. Darren Sproles like type prospect, who's going to be a draft pick, but he's great in the backfield if fully healthy. The offensive line looks good, but I mean it, the offense for LSU. This is one of the best offenses I think we've seen in the decade, um, and, and, and it is just something special. And what I think even more was fun to watch was Oklahoma has a very good offense. Actually, numbers wise, a tick better than LSU this year. I know they play in different conferences, yeah. but they are not too shabby themselves. You saw this LSU defense though. Um, bring the heat. The the the, the DBs Delpit. You saw uh, Delpit. You saw the the true freshman um, as well, who is who is uh, guarding uh, CD Lamb. Yeah, it was incredible to watch. This LSU team's legit. Yeah, dude. Uh, Ashley Fisher, shout out to Governor. She said it best. It looks like. <laughs> The receivers from the LSU Tigers had magnets on their gloves. Yes. Joe Burrow was tossing dimes. Joe Burrow was surgical. Joe Burrow was just abusing the Oklahoma defense. Um, what do you say to that defense? If you're at halftime, if you're the Grinch that stole Christmas and you're looking at the guys in the eyes, you're like, let's get back out there. Let's do our best. You know, what is the pump zero? Yeah, hey, you fellas, can't give it's that. It's a zero-zero game. Can't do that. Let's just get a stop. History was made in a half, Dude, folks. This just... defense, the team was just the demeanor was down. Lincoln Riley, I, I have thoughts. Was he thinking about leaving for the Cowboys at halftime? I mean, how do you handle that situation as a coach? Uh, Joe it's Burrow's, tough to see. Joe it's, Burrow it's, snapped every single record in the first half. Yeah, yeah. it's especially rough. Because Oklahoma actually didn't have many mistakes coming out of the gate. I think they had one turnover all game. That was the only turnover. Uh, they only had one turnover, I think, in the first half, and that was the only turnover in the game. LSU didn't have any, and it's like you you can't even say that you know you just need to you know have less mistakes and go in and execute the game plan. It's like you you kind of did everything that was expected, and you fell short. Um, it got to a point where whenever they got to the goal line, Zach and I were kind of rooting that they would pass it. Whenever they r- ran mm. the football, it was kind of disappointing. It was like, yes. oh, we want to see eight. We want to see nine in the in the first half. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, you'll talk about it later. But it's a statement about the Big 12 and what the college playoff, what those, what the criteria is. It, it, right now it's the most deserving, and that's fine. And I don't have any problem with that being the criteria. But don't pretend that you're going to have the four best teams in the college playoffs if that's how you're going to do it. There mm. is a difference between most deserving Hot and, take, and, and the best four teams. And unfortunately, there's no way to to integrate those. Hot take. There. Yeah. 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 I mean, if you're if you're talking from a from a lens of that, that Sam's referring to, yeah, Pac-12, if you know, if you're Oregon, if you take care of business at, at ASU, you know, you're essentially in the you're, eyes of everyone in. that's selecting you're in like i think people would have given the nod to Oregon. yeah do you not no yeah 100 percent. oregon gets the nod one loss they oregon were and ranked, one loss they OU. Were, they were ranked ahead of ou they were ranked in that initial ranking it was oregon utah ou baylor the rest five of, six seven eight the rest they of the ranked field the pack 12 their hand. they yeah. ranked the pack 12 higher they just did and and i think also at the same time what what i realized is how important recruiting is you got to get the talent. Like college football, it, it's a game of talent. It, it's a, 
it, it, it's a league of talent. If you get the top, if you get those top ten, top fifteen recruiting classes in year and year out, then you're gonna be, you know, you you are going to be um, in, in contention for that 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 you know top four spot. Yeah. CFP. But yeah, that's why you're consistently seeing the LSU's. You're seeing the Oklahomas and the the Alabamas, the Clemsons. But it's really tough for for maybe a Oregon, Texas, who are right on the brink with the talent wise. A and M's. Yeah. Florida's Auburn's those are like those those teams that are right there with the recruits but there's just something that's not clicking yet so it'd be interesting to see who can kind of get over the brink and and get to that four spot or three spot even agreed I completely agree with you talk about recruiting you talk about who slays it on the recruiting sale uh trail sale recruiting Either trail one. Dabo Sweeney also, Ryan Day, don't know how he is as a recruiter, but Ohio State, they recruits itself. Load up. Those two guys Load went up. after each other. Clemson, Ohio State, you got plentiful draft Three picks. Three stars aren't an option, Zach. Uh, Four stars are, are a disappointment at this point. Five stars are what matters, the, and and that's when you know your program's in a good spot. Crazy quarterback play out of this one. You got the Fields kid who, who showed up. A couple of drop picks by Clemson, which – could have turned his night into a bad one. There's a pick six going the other way yeah. one on the sideline that they dropped, but an otherwise just great performance from from Fields, a gutty performance from Lawrence, um, Chase Young, a, a non factor if you will. They didn't yeah. allow him to to have any sacks. I don't think um, Akuda. He played like a, oh, a top five draft pick. Uh, what did you see in this one, ZB? Oh man, um, I, I think we, we talked a little bit about this before the game. Me and Zach have talked about it for a couple of weeks now. I'm um, trying to prepare for the pod and and what our takes are, kind of hear each other out. I, you watch that game. I think yeah, what I got out of it was Clemson, the experience factor. What was was so huge. Uh, you had Etn back. Dabo's obviously the coach. You had Etn. You had Lawrence Ross yeah. Higgins. All these guys who are game changers were back on offense, and you kind of saw like the experience that you know. First half the offense wasn't flowing. Second half though, when it mattered, like there was no like nerve. It did not seem like there was a nerve that came out of that anyone's body on offense. You saw how Good. Lawrence just what Zach said earlier, like, surgical. What a word, but it is so beautiful for how you saw Trevor Lawrence playing in that, that final drive. Yeah. ETN making big plays. Ohio you saw State's Higgins de- and Ross. defensively, their worst, their worst stand of the year. Worst stand. During worst that, stand. During that Lawrence Not one drive. incompletion pass. I think it was four completions for you know, 95 has yards. To get no, yeah. and, and but, but I think producer Sam also talked about it before the show, too, is that this Ohio State team, and I, I, I think so as well, is they were the most complete team in the country this year. Um, that you know they had all they had the NFL town on all phases of the ball. They got the quarterback. They got the 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 Chase Young Akuda. They got the second corner and um and I'm forgetting his name right now Wade. Um, and then they got the offensive talent as well. But it was the experience factor. Day had never been there as a head coach, and neither Fields. Uh, you saw Lawrence and this this Dabo Sweeney led Clemson Tigers look so strong when it mattered. Which isn't was fun isn't to it watch. great to see two teams at their peak just oh, duke it out dude, like that? It was an incredible battle. game. Yeah, Zach Zach said it, mentioning you know Ryan Day. I think that that was kind of the 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 most important. Could have know, been a difference maker. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think if you took Ohio State's roster and you gave that to Dabo. I think that you might have an OSU LSU showdown. Um, sure. I think there were just some. I think in some areas he was playing too conservatively after they they came up with the lead, and then kind of let Trevor Lawrence walk down the field when they uh, when they got the ball uh, in the, that, their last drive uh, behind their own five yard line. I thought that you know that wasn't a very good stand to to, to be showing your defense in a college football playoff game. So sure, um, yeah, I think. Oh, but oh, I mean, Ohio State's going to be fine next year. I, oh, we're we're all excited Reload. to see what they can do. They have a year underneath their belt. Quarterback's confident. Whenever you go toe to toe with a Trevor Lawrence in the college football game, and you lose just by basically a touchdown, and you you could have come and actually beaten them. Take your hats off. You feel you. I, I think you feel good, and you have you have something to prove. And um, we've seen it with you know other quarterbacks in the past where you you know what it's like to to be in that situation and you just want to make the right decisions the next time. No, that, yeah. You know, producer Sam so eloquently, that's, that was my, that was actually, you know, my take going in was uh, who are you going to choose Trevor Lawrence or, or Justin Fields? 
And, you know, you, you can make the argument. You look at the running backs, intricate storyline with the running backs, ETN having something to prove with Dobbins getting all the pub, Dobbins hobbling around on one foot, gutting yeah. it out, oh, gutting dude. it out. Not not much better to see <sighs> in the Dobbins just in the in the – the face of adversity. Gotta love it. Battling it, through. And sure enough, Fields, you know, going back to the, the quarterback battle, Fields through the pick, not his fault. You see the hands on the head at the end. He was so surprised that his Tough receiver broke you that off. You hurt for him. Yeah, his receiver thought thought it was scramble drill, and he was he was expecting him to be there. So, um, like Jack's producer Sam said in 2020, the OSU Buckeyes will be back oh, in man. 2020. Is that give me – Give me your thoughts going into next year. I know it's early. It's early. Oh, we we don't we, we haven't seen the freshman classes Way too get it on the college field. But you're looking into this 2020 season. It's going to be a fun one. You, you see Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields back. Round two, potentially, going into the CFP next year. Yeah. You're, you're seeing some, some programs. LSU, it'll be interesting where they're at. I'll or, take this LSU Oregon. outside looking in. LSU outside looking in. Yeah. Alabama gets a Bryce Young coming in. But Mac Jones, he proved to be a good quarterback oh, yeah. with the, all the talent Bama's that Alabama has, and they got Devontae Smith coming back on the outside with Bama the running backs there. coming back. Bama will be right in the picture. You, you, Big Ten wise, I think Michigan they they might be outside looking in as well. But like a Florida with Kyle Trask coming back, uh, they'll be good. I mean, the SEC is going to be right back where they're at. Georgia, if Fromm comes back, that team is going to be legit. Um, that's what i'm saying dude you just listed it just... right there lsu uh, unfortunately i think you know this is the season of destiny in more ways than one i i, yeah. I do think yeah it's going to be tough for them to get back into the conversation as crazy as that yeah. sounds because of of alabama who's now is hungry what does a hungry yeah. alabama look like we haven't seen that in a while um as you alluded to with trask and and um from potentially coming yeah. back in a loaded sec and then someone that can run the table like an Oregon. Uh, i was gonna say you know you look at an Oregon. they're they've got the best offensive line in the country they've got the skill position players coming back if they can land a grad transfer like julian newman from wake forest they're gonna be right in the picture um and then i mean big 12 wise it's tough for me to think that it's not texas is to lose next year yeah. I mean, no, Matt Rule's Texas gone. Fan, Matt Rule's gone. Yeah. Oklahoma, Riley's back, but Hertz is gone. Uh, CD Lamb's gone. What are you gonna I, do? Are you uh, in the Spencer transfer Rattler market? steps in. Yeah. That's got to be the guy. Um, Texas is the only team in the Big Twelve who has the defense that can that can stop the slow bleed that you get when you play an ACC or an SEC yeah. team. You you got to think as a Texas fan, kind of boom or bust. They may not. They may not. Yeah, they may not have the offensive power that. OU has, but their defense is just so much better that right. I think that's – I mean, and you saw it like in the LSU game. Right. Oh, yeah. In the no, first year, like they – Something they, happened in that season where it went off the rails, but right. as you're alluding to, it looks like they belong. Yeah. Some, and was that an early – I mean, yeah, that was the first – that was the first, first game, game of the for, season, but yeah. both teams had players who were figuring things out. Yeah. And if – I forgot who it was that dropped the touchdown in the end zone, but – Keontae Keontae Ingram. Ingram, yeah. yeah, you can't forget yeah, that. Yeah, but I mean, r- rolling back to LSU, the year of the Tiger. We all know it. We all see it. That's why it's hard for me to not say it is LSU's year. So you're gonna pick them? But but what, what what's interesting? If they can get a grad transfer, I think they're just fine because they got all their receivers coming back except Jefferson, and they're gonna get Jamar Chase, the Blinkoff winner, back. And then yeah. they get Marshall, their third leading receiver, who's out six games, and he had 600 yards receiving. Yeah, but I think it's just different when you got a guy that's distributing. Like, you don't have like Burrow. Burrow was. Totally different. But that, that, that LSU team is going to be, I think, in like a Florida position next year. They're going to be like that 8-10 yeah. to 10 ranked team in the country. They're going to have a great year, win 10 games. Because when you can chalk up a couple games to yeah. literally just Burrow. I mean, oh, you know, the Texas like game. just Burrow. Yeah, one comes to mind, the Texas game. Alabama. It's one guy. Yeah. yeah. Alabama, Texas. So you're right about that. Those are really small margins, but yeah, to your point, they reload. You know, can they get a, a Julian Newman type or some grad transfer that can step in and 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 kind of help alleviate the pain of losing the man? You'll have to see because all the Joe Brady hype and all the yeah. all this hype is it is it Burrow? Is it Burrow? <laughs> right. It's a Belichick Brady type yeah. of thing we got yeah. going yeah. on. Careful college here. Version. Love that. Interesting. Love that. Interesting Chicken or the egg. You, Chicken you, or the egg. You can't teach those throws though. <laughs> 
I no, mean, dude. Joe no. Burrow is legit. No, he is not a. He's what about the one the SEC system. championship game where yeah. he's dodging dudes? Oh, like he's it's playing incredible. Mario Kart or whatever. I don't know. Dude. Zach, who do you got him. national championship? Okay, Clemson LSU. We, Just tell we, us. we got kind of long winded on yeah, that. Yeah, we so did. Sorry, but so Clemson fun to LSU. About. LSU is a five and a half point favorite. Some have them at six. If you're checking your books out there, but you know. Tomato, tomato in this one. Mm. Tomato, tomato in this one. Do you go with the the destiny, the story? It's already written. It's already written. I know Joe Burrow's already read the story. They're winners at the end. But a guy named Trevor Lawrence, the goose is loose with Trevor Lawrence. This yeah. guy's this guy's basically 6'9", 320 pounds the way he plays <laughs> the game, dude. He's huge. Running like a gazelle. He's huge, yeah. dude. And who are you going to pick? Toss a coin. Ask your mother. Ask your father. Um, I'm going with Clemson. Clemson with the points. I don't Clemson know. Clemson with the points. I don't know if they're gonna win outright. Yeah, I mean. But, but then it's, something can see me. It could be. You LSU, gotta go outright. LSU. Outright. You. Who do you got? Outright. Outright. Spreads fun. Spreads fun. But take, outright, man. I'll take it's a Clemson. I'll be a spoiler. Game. This is a national championship game. There's no. You win the spread. Who wins the game? <sighs> Clemson Tigers. It's hard for me, man. It is hard for me. I mean, it, you just went through the whole analysis. It's, it's so just great. Hundred percent facts. This <laughs> is amazing. This is this is the elite of the elitist. This That's what is, you showed up for. This is this is the football gods giving it to us, man. It's amazing to see. It, it, I'm excited to see elite talent play each other, and we're not seeing. We will not see an Alabama Notre Dame. We'll has not LSU see that. seen a defense like this? Has L, uh, has LSU seen a defense like this? Probably, L- <laughs> SEC. Bama, Auburn, the Bama. Bama game was fifty to forty two or whatever. I know, it was, man. That's dude. why I think this is going to be a high scoring game. Has I don't LSU think it. Ma- it? I don't think the defense matters. Georgia, they played Georgia thirty five on Georgia. This is Georgia's statistically best defense that Kirby Smart has had. Dude, is it actually? I don't know. Statistically, it is. This guy, so, Brett Venables, is going to be dialing up pressure. Yeah, he is. He is. And, and, and what's gonna he's not going to let Joe Burrow just sit back there. Well, I know he's mobile. The best, the best matchup you could have is Venables versus Brady. God, come on. Only the college football geeks can understand how how amazing this matchup is going to be. You're going to see the corner blitzes, the full safety come in once in a while from Venables. He's going to bring the pressure to Burrow and ta- challenge him early on and really see what this guy's about. Yeah. And it'll be interesting to see how yeah. they adjust what Brady does and, and what Venables does. And, and I'm, like, absolutely geeked out about oh, seeing this yeah. coordinator matchup with exactly. Brady yeah. Venables. Oh, yeah. A lot of talk. No picks from, from ZB's side over there. A lot of talk, no picks. I'm going. I'm going at O and Joe Burrow. Oh, it's the year God. of the LSU Tiger. Year of the LSU Tiger. I saw it in a vision. Listen, and I guys, love Trevor Lawrence. Take this to the bank. The Tigers are winning. <laughs> oh, You're the Tiger. The are saying sneaky. Ah. But these Tigers wear purple and gold. Oh. oh, dude, I don't know how you pick against them. I don't. I. I how did I convince myself? To I pick don't know. Clemson? But I don't how do you? Know. Pick I also against... just want them to win more. Really? Do I really? think that? The numbers suggest it. I don't really know, but it is pretty likable. I guess. Burrow's- also, also, also. Wait, think about this. We're, the The underdog is a the the team that won a championship a last champion. year, and not only that, their quarterback is twenty four and zero in college. Maybe that's what scares starter. me. That's yeah. what scares me. This is a legendary matchup we're that's about to I'm, see. I'm geeking out. That's man. what I feel like in the Ohio State game. That's what I feel like. People yeah. are sleeping it's on be great. a. Uh, it's just gonna be huge. It's gonna be a great ooh. game. I'm here's, so here's what's interesting. If Tune they in. lose, if they lose, they get they actually probably won't get bumped down the ranking at all. Actually, now that I think about it, they'll Clemson. go undefeated again next year. Clemson. They'll go oh, undefeated yeah, they'll again there. next year. They'll be there. It'll be interesting though. Yeah, it'll they'll just be by there. default they won't play anyone again next year. Hang around, stay a while, tune in. How Monday. dare you say that about Mac Brown's North Carolina Tar Monday Heels. the 13th. <laughs> Dude, yeah, Mac's on the but scene. But the ACC is Come good. On. Rebirth. Come on. Rebirth. A uh, couple other – well, we spent too much time in college football, yeah. but bowl vibes, Rose Bowl vibes, Pasadena vibes. Uh, you got to see Herbert just kind of toss it around. Or run it around. Run it Three around. Three touchdowns. More like it. But he only threw only it like that. 20 times. The best part of the Rose Bowl, Zach, is the Herb Street-Fowler combo. <laughs> I mean, ZB's been on the Herb Street uh, Fowler combo lately. I'm telling you, there is not a better announcer in 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 any sport than Kirk Herb Street. This guy yeah. is a Throw he's better than Tony Romo. Window. I don't want to hear anyone oh, bring Tony wow. Romo to the table. Herb Street is a legend. Uh, this man's a, a a bona fide Hall of Famer, college football Hall of Famer. This guy is a legend. Wow. How you hear him dissect the game, how you hear him just talk through talk through everything is just next level. Wow, uh, Herb dude. Street's a big time. Big time announcer makes the game fun to watch. Oregon, Wisconsin. 
I mean, not not the best game. Not a very attractive Bros Bowl, but no. Herb Street's calling it, man. You got to tune there. in. It was there. The backdrop, sunny in 65 in Pasadena. <laughs> Players are ready. The granddaddy of them all. Granddaddy of them all. Herb Street threw the bias out the window. I don't even know if he, he's an Ohio State guy. So, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, yeah, he's, he, he, he did call the Ohio State Clemson game. And he though. threw the bias out the window. Yeah, so he did. somewhere he did. It's great. Uh, but yeah, Herb Street's the man, dude. He's he's a really likable guy. And, and then oh. Fowler, uh, perfect combo there. D- gets gets out of his way a little bit. Let's yeah. him. Let's him. Uh, let's Herb Street work his way. Let's him shine. Let's it's him great. shine. Uh, but that's a good, good college football season, man. I can't, yeah. wait, can't wait for it to finish. Can't wait for next year. We're 250. Monday the 13th away. will be a fun game. But I'm I'm already looking forward to 2020. 249 days away. I don't know. Check check the stats on that that guy. Uh, I I'm, I'm looking into producer Sam's eyes and he's saying we're going to a break. Stick around. Oh. Let's do it. Look who's talking. Golden Mike boys. slice of pizza enjoying my time watching texas tech basketball playing baylor at home in lubbock wish i was at the game wish i was a student zach yeah um yeah but we're diving into a little bit of nfl playoffs a little big boy football and wow what a weekend for the road warriors national football league who <laughs> would have thought it who would have thunk it we're gonna dive into the to the four games um that happened this weekend yep. and then dive into the divisional matchups but We'll start first. Deshaun Watson, the savior of all, the savior of all things Houston, the Houston Texans, and the young quarterback of the Bills. They Josh struggled Allen. a little bit. Josh <laughs> Allen forcing the issue at the end. What was Josh Allen doing at the end? <laughs> Dude. I have, Son. Zach, I, I have no idea, my friend. I don't. He was doing some Brett Favre stuff. I don't. Just throwing it out. Just throwing <laughs> Trying to make things happen. Zach, the best. Let's not let's not kid ourselves. The best part of that football game was was here. I, I'm all on an announcer thing right now. Here in Booger McFarland announcing a uh, a freaking wild. Why is everybody game. dogging on my guy Booger? Oh man, I, Booger seems like such a nice guy, but <laughs> in real time, you're just listening to this game and you are like, what is this man saying right now? I was texting Jordan Holsher and producer Sam separately, like. What is this man saying right Everybody now? Everybody lights my boy. Booger Third out. and ten, and he goes with twenty seconds <laughs> left. It. He goes, you know, if I'm if I'm Sean McDermott, I'd do a drop play, and then I spike the ball. And you had to turn over and down, and you lose the game. Booger, what do you mean? booger, booger. My, my wife would know that that would be a turnover on downs. <laughs> This man's name is Booger. It couldn't be more foot fitting. It's just beautiful. But but anyways, Josh Allen. He he then also went on to say how great Josh Allen was for the whole game. And then he throws one bad throw and is like, I don't like what Josh Allen is doing right now. You know what I like to call those throws? YOLO throws. You only live once throws. Booger. This is not the time. I was Booger. like, Booger, 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 Booger. <laughs> oh man, what a guy. But anyways, Josh Allen was uh had a great game overall singletary looked good i thought the bills honestly i was impressed with them in their first playoff game Dude, in yeah. my lifetime if uh, you're a bills fan if you're a bills fan you gotta be happy. promising futures yeah man. you promising can't you future. can't be upset you can't you can't have any knee-jerk reactions about mcdermott or about allen or about anything that's going on you oh, gotta no. be happy with where you are you gotta yes. be you gotta chalk it up as your young quarterback trying to make too many plays yes absolutely let's talk about another young quarterback on the other let's side you're talking Corner, this is your guy. Corner blitz. They bring both. This guy pulls the Houdini, and it's like the corners hit each other, and he somehow slips out the back. Like, it's tell me about plays like that when Dabo Sweeney calls this guy the Michael Jordan of football. It's one of those Russell Are you Wilson. Kidding? I think I, I honestly, as a Cardinals fan watching the NFC West football, it's, I've seen that year in and year it's out with Russell Wilson. Man, this guy. That's what he does, and that's what Deshaun Watson does. And there's not many quarterbacks in this league that do that type of thing, but the, there's a couple that just know how to pull a play like that out of their it's butt. Feel. It's and feel. it's just this 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 extra out-of-body experience, you could call it. Dude, total it factor, and, and that's what you had. I don't know what it is with the Texans and slow starts and, and getting D-hop going, but for some reason, like first, second quarter, you can't find the guy, mm. and then and then the – Second half starts and Deshaun starts dealing this thing to to Hopkins finds his man and 
And that Texans offense is really talented. No they, Fuller either. No Will Fuller. No, to take so the top off. If you which, can get him back, that de- that offense is different once Will Fuller's, Fuller's in the lineup. So I'll be interested to see, like, Houston playing in Kansas City this week. Can, can Fuller get healthy? That offense looks different. Texans a little juice with J.J. Watt. They had him mic'd up. At first, I thought it was a little gimmicky. Uh, I thought, like uh, – Was it legit? Yeah. That's what you always ask yourself when you get the mic on the player. Right. I was like, is J.J. Watt – like, should Charles Minahu, the rookie from Texas – shout out Texas – should he be in there? <laughs> you know, he's had a great season, honestly. But I, I thought it was a little gimmicky. And then J.J. – Came up and he made a few plays. Made had the plays. big sack. Got a uh, sack. Let that the really changed changed the the momentum of the game in in uh, Houston's favor. It's Texans team. I like him. I like him too. They're they're. Uh, I think I don't know if they they can beat the Chiefs. They can. They've done it this year. So I can't say they haven't. They can't do it. But in a playoff scenario, I think it's different. But good team. If, yeah. If they want to win, they can't go scoreless in the first half. No. The Bills no, are up Slow starts, dude. They came back into it the second half, but Patrick Mahomes is not going to let you. He's not going to let you come back in the second half. Slow in fact, starts. he plays better in the second half, as we all know. Yeah. yeah. Next one, Viking Saints. The whole country had the Saints. Zach Overby had the Vikings. Um, what happened? I, You know, Kirk Cousins, maybe you prove it. Maybe a, you like that game from him. Uh, yeah, I'll say. Did you see the post-game? post, post game? He gave it to him pretty hard. That's yeah. great. Ever since he became a, a friend of the pod, he's been he's uh, the guy saying. He's been soaring. Do you remember beginning of the year when Kurt, uh, Stephon Diggs and Adam Thielen were calling this man out dude, publicly? Dude. Kirk Kurt Cousins doesn't complain. All he does is start to throw 300 yards, three tutties a game. If and you know what? I don't want to give us props, Zach, but hashtag friend of the pod. We Kurt totally – dude, us. we 180 on this guy. and it was, or, I mean, not 180 on this guy. We were, we were a fan of the guy. If you're a fan of Look Who's Talking and he followed us, you saw the turmoil at the beginning of the yeah. season. What a guy to just rise from the, rise from the ashes and, and take this team – where they need to go. Yeah, no. Destiny. Destiny. But Destiny. the Vikings, but it's more than that. They have a really talented roster. Yeah. They play really, really defense good defense. Defense looks great. They play really good defense. And um, I'm sorry to say if you're a Saints fan out there, shout out Tom Barfield. But these guys, it, it's a story that keeps rewriting itself year in and year out um, in the playoffs. Maybe it's a, a P.I. here. Maybe mm-hmm. it's a – Music City Miracle there. Maybe mm. it's, you know. Tough to see. Five years, and it's been really tough exits for, for Saints fans. Yeah, 100%. Vikings, like, look, I don't know if they even played that well, to be honest with you. I mean, I, I watched the, the game, and uh, I think more so what was what was not what, – what was the reason the Saints, you got to put the blame on the coaching staff. I, I thought offensively it was kind of mind-boggling at time what they were doing on play calls. Third and one were running – or, or running screen passes for Alvin Kamara. Get Latavius Murray in the game and do a handoff. It's as simple as that. You've got yeah, a good offensive line. Cute. you got yeah. a pro bowler on the offensive line. Run behind him. Trust your line. They didn't seem to do that. They kind of got cute with the play calling. Um, but you got to give props to the Minnesota defense for really like getting Drew Brees uncomfortable. Here's an interesting thing for this game, though. It, if Drew Brees doesn't have a Super Bowl, where are we at with him? Yeah. Because he's 8-8. Eight and eight. In playoff games, you got to do. He's the- average in the playoff game, and, and and I'm just saying, like, if he doesn't have a Super Bowl, I don't know Felipe if we're considering Rivers. him in that. Yeah, are, are we considering him in the Phil Rivers category? Yeah, yeah. In in you know bigger questions for Saints fan, where do you where do you go from here? You know, you're kind of just a little bit um, stuck in quicksand. Yeah, you know, uh, early playoffs exits. Sean Payton probably getting a little bored, maybe <sighs> maybe looking for greener pastures. Yeah. And Drew Brees aging. You're, you're going to have to reshape that team yep. at, at, at some point in time. So yeah, exactly. Tough, tough exit for the Saints. Oh, man. Um, another game, Titans. The Titans of football, which are <laughs> basically rebirth with a guy by the name of Ryan Tannehill, receiver at Texas A&M. He's he's a quarterback for these Tennessee Titans, and he's playing some good football. He's making throws when it counts. Making throws when it counts. He's not doing too much. They beat the Patriots. Is this the end of you know everything that are the Patriots' way? What 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 do you take away from this game? Uh, man, what what more do you love than than the Titans know who they are and they embrace it? They're a team that just punches you ground in the and mouth pound. day after play after play. They ground and pound. Derrick Henry is a grown ass man yeah. this guy is different straight yeah. up he's different and he's got the juice he's got the juice 
and, and he's a friend of the pod. And, yeah. and he's Derek one Henry of those, is a friend of the he's pod. He's a friend of the pod. He's one of those guys that you're like, he's on my fantasy team. He, he's the number one rusher in the in the in the league this year, 1500 yards. He is a 6'3", 235, 40-pound back who runs a 4'5", and just gets five yards every freaking time he gets a ball. He just kept giving it to him. Gushes I, down their throats. Mike Vrabel, what do you – I, I got I love this about Mike Vrabel. Used to be a New England Patriot. Oh, yeah. Was a linebacker for them. Uh, Mike Vrabel goes into Gillette and just straight up says, I'm going to – Give this to you guys yeah. down the throat, yeah. day in, day out, Set and here up we go. Set up play action. Yeah. It was incredible. Tannehill, yeah. you got to give it up for this guy. This is a uh, a revolution of a career, if you want to call it. I well, don't listen, even know. Yeah, 7-2 and two since he, My he came over as a starter. Fun to see, man. Ryan, 10, 22 touchdowns, 7 picks. Highest passer rating out of quarterbacks this year. Tannehill? Yes. Jeez yes. Least, By bro. pro football focus. Come on. Come on, pro football folks. Not insane. Don't give us stats fun like to that see. for look who's talking. You're fun to see. Turn us into a juggernaut. Juggernaut. Titan um, team fun. Is it the end of the Brady era, Zach? Yeah, where does he go? What, I mean, producer Sam, you got to take. Where's he heading? Greener pastures just to hang out? Huh? I mean, if he comes back. Chargers? If, if he comes back, <laughs> it's it's not to win a Super Bowl. Uh, it's likely to do what they did this year. If they can pick up a, a good receiving court, if they can't, I don't know if they win their division. They might be looking at a wild card game. Um, but I think that whatever – I have no idea what he's going to end up doing, but this idea that he can come back and you know try to add one more at, at this point, he would need to be on a different team if that's what his I'm gonna goal throw, is. I'm going to throw yeah. you one. Chargers. Belichick finds a way every year. He finds a way to get a wide receiver. He finds a way to make this team, team good, and he did that this year. He got Antonio Brown. Yeah. He got him, and I don't care – they did not see what happened where they had to release him after one game. Obviously, there was a lot going on in the in the uh, behind the scenes, but but he got Antonio Brown. If this team has Antonio Brown, it's a different season. Like this, sure. this team has the first round bye over the Chiefs. This team is a Super Bowl contender. They have the threat. Antonio Brown is a top five receiver, top seven receiver in the league. So what yeah. I'm going to tell you is Belichick's going to get a guy. I'm going to throw you a name right now, Keenan Allen. Keenan oh, Allen, the Chargers. This team has been not a playoff team for the past three, four, five years. Wow. Keenan Allen's an unbelievable receiver, but do the Patriots give so the hog, get talking, the guy? A lot of talking heads are saying Tom to the Chargers, but you're saying, saying no, Keenan, Keenan Allen to the, Pats. to the Pats. You got Nikhil Harry one more year. You got Sanu and Edelman. That team with Keenan Allen, Edelman, Sanu, healthy, Harry one more year into the league. That I'm just saying that that's that's different. That that team that team is a good that that's a good set of weapons for Brady. So I think Brady comes back one more year, gives it another shot, but he cannot end his yeah. career on that pick. It just raises the question a little bit on you know, you're looking at these uh these young quarterbacks as we always talk about. Everybody's moving around, everybody's athletic. Are they are they a step behind? You know, when Belichick wanted to move off his guy and Kraft was like, no way, no how, mm. when he wanted Garoppolo in Could there. Could have Garoppolo right now. You know, it's just it's one of those things where, Tom, all due respect, but look at the league around you at this time. You, you have to be a little bit mobile. A lot of young gunslingers out there. Yeah, Zach, you got to be a little Brady bit Brady ain't mobile. one of them. No, so we'll see. Um, shout out Tom. R.I.P. R.I.P. Tom. Tom. Sad to see. Maybe. Um, okay. Uh, Eagles. Seahawks. Curly-headed man by the name of Russell Wilson. He's Still growing his hair show. out. He's got the fro going he does. right now, too. He does, and you got to respect it. And you got to respect bro. what he's done this year. Yeah, that, that game to me was uh, least fun to watch. Terrible game. Terrible game. Terrible game. Uh, I don't think the Seahawks even played well. They, they beat an Eagles team in Philadelphia who was 9-7 and seven and had Josh McCown for half the game. Yeah, who's shout 40 out Josh years McCown. Old. Great guy. But Love the guy. But – you Come saw him on. get emotional post game. Man, it, it, we all picked Seattle as our our favorite this year. Uh, 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 kind of last three weeks. I'd like season, to move off that like now. Seattle, and I would love to move off that. I'd pick. love to move off that. <laughs> but here's the thing: like this guy Russell Wilson, there's just something about Russell Wilson that kind of always gives you the fear of God. Dude, you. there's great leadership <laughs> on just, the Seahawks. Just incredible to watch, and he's a Deshaun Watson like guy where. He just comes up with these plays that you don't understand how he did it. The third and ten that they had in, in the end of the game, and they throw that, that Metcalf. pass to Metcalf, I knew. like You kind of just knew that was going to yeah. happen. Yeah. That's the kind of guy he is. So 
I wouldn't be surprised to see them upset Green Bay next round. I wouldn't either. Packers are moving into these to the divisional round. Yeah, ZB's mulling it over, but uh, we can start there. Seahawks, Packers. Packers are a four-point favorite. Um, I, I would take the Seahawks with the points. I'd take the Seahawks Same. almost outright. I, I don't like this Packers team that much. There's also something about the the wild card, a wild card team who just got off a big win on the road, momentum swinging their way. Yeah, and a veteran one, quarterback like Russell Wilson. Yeah. The other team sitting at home with a rookie coach and a quarterback in Aaron Rodgers who's been a little off Shaky. this year. Shaky. Not a lot of weapons to throw to. Defense has been good, but I. There's something that screams Seahawks to me. Uh, Pete Carroll knows what to do in these situations, knows to get his team together. And, and there's just something about the Seahawks and just the culture they've built. That yeah. It's hard Great to culture. bet against them. Great culture. Great culture. Um, you got my guy, shout out Texas Longhorn, Quandre Diggs. Yeah. Big Dude, pickup for them from the so Lions this year. Huge for them. Calling out defensive Safety. plays and flying around back there. A little Earl, no fly zone. Earl Thomas look alike. Um, but anyways, yeah, they're playing good football. I might like them in the upset. Um, the other game, Texas Chiefs, we alluded to it a little bit earlier. Chiefs uh-uh. are a double-digit favorite. I don't know where I really stand on this. The Texans, like we, we already kind of dissected and dived in. You got Deshaun Watson. He can he can get after it. You got a revitalized defense with J.J. Watt. How healthy is he? We Man. don't know. Um, but then a really, really good Chiefs team. The defense has been on and off. Yeah. Uh, but it's hard to bet against Patrick Mahomes and the weapons that he's thrown to, or the no-namers. Yeah, I'm with you, man. I, I think you're spot on with what you're saying, but a, a double-digit favorite, I, I personally think it's the Chiefs. I just look at like yeah. the lack of run game Houston has on the road in Kansas City. I think Deshaun's great, but I just – if they do what they did against Buffalo, it's going to be a long night. So I, I'm, and I have no reason to believe it's not going to be like it was against Buffalo. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I would go Chiefs big in this game. Yeah, I tend to agree. I tend to agree. But um, I, uh, where do I stand on that? I don't really know. We can come Tough. back to it. Vi- Vikings 49ers though. Um, friend of the pod, Kirk Cousins. Yes. Are we riding with him? Jimmy Garoppolo, best looking man in football. I think this is a good this is a good game, a sneaky good game. Yeah, dude. This out of the slate, I mean, Let me hear do, it. do you kind of like this one? I like I the, like this. What are you itching to so watch? So what's Maybe? also fun though is it, the my two my two games that I'm itching to watch, Niners Vikings, Titans Ravens. Right. Those are the two ones. I, I like Chiefs Texans, but the Texans just are so weird. So I don't really like that. I think Chiefs win big. But man, the Titans Ravens is a fun game. But what what I like about this this Niners Niners uh, Vikes Niners Vikings game is, is you get a team with this Vikings team. You just get this Vikings team. You know what you're getting. You're getting a guy and Cousins, but and you're getting the receiving weapons they got. You got Rudolph on in, as the tight end spot. Dalvin Cook, sneaky good running back uh, with that defense that yeah. travels well. Um, what's really like, uh, if you look at it, there's not much pressure on the Vikings in this game because it's, it's a road game. They've already won one game in the playoffs. So you could almost say this is a, a, a win for their season. Right. But you look at the Niners, a lot of pressure First one seed. Not yeah. only that, Jimmy G, we paid you the big bucks to win these types of games. You could see it. Is he going to do this? That's why I'm low key thinking, Vikings might either at least cover the spread and if not win this game because it's going to be a good one. I just think Cousins just won a big game on the road against Drew Brees. What makes me think he's not going to win one against Jimmy G? Dude, what great analysis from ZB on look who's talking. Come on. Listen, listen. Listen, fans of the pod, Vikings are going into that game with nothing to lose, just like ZB said. Flying loose, playing loose, loosey-goosey. No, I like it. I like the upset there, maybe. Jimmy G plays a little tight, maybe short arms a couple of those yeah. throws. Yeah, uh, we've seen him do it. Yeah, we'll see. Titans, last matchup, Titans, Ravens. I think Titans uh, maybe stumble a little this one in, in, yeah. and the Ravens move on. Um, this is not the sitting duck Tom Brady and the, the Patriots no. that you're playing against. It's the opposite. Yeah, this guy Lamar is electric, man. Um, welcome to the playoffs, Lamar Jackson. Let's get it onto it. This will be fun to see. Let's get. We into- saw him in the playoffs last year, but it, it was it's abysmal. Different. It's, it was, it was very bad. Very he bad had to a watch. Rough go. So uh, I think this is a different Lamar, different Lamar Jackson to watch, and 
man, it, it's going to be fun seeing two running attacks like this, like Mark Ingram versus Derrick Henry. What a, what a matchup, man, right? Yeah, the two Bama, Bama running backs, backs going after each other, two Heisman guys. You got the iconic photo of Derrick Henry yeah. standing next to Mark Ingram. While Mark Ingram's in the league. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's going to be Ravens. Just that Ravens just have so much momentum. It's almost similar to an LSU type of year, the year of the Raven, you would almost say. Ooh. But Tigers, um, tigers and birds. Tigers, tigers and birds. And so birds. You, you, you gotta love it. I, I'm just, yeah, I'd take Ravens in this game, and I think pretty big, honestly. Let's get to the last seg here. We've talked college football. We've talked the National Football League. Let's stay with football. Let's do it. What a fitting finish. I love football, man. It's a coaching carousel. It's coaching changes. Call it a coaching conundrum in Waco. Uh, you lost your guy, Matt Rule. <laughs> didn't know it was coming. <laughs> Two thought, worlds colliding. I thought he would be a New York Giant. I said it here on Look Who's Talking. I said it to yeah. everyone that would listen. The Panthers did not let him walk out of the interview to a tune of $60 million. I mean, damn near gave him a lifetime contract. Seven years, $60 million with potential to get up to $70 million in incentives. Jeez. I, incredible. Uh, yeah. I, Matt Rule, it, it's hard for me to say, like, good hire because it's like, Unproven. He did really well at Baylor for three years. Don't get me wrong, like turned around the program. But how is it's an, it's a weird fit, right? Matt Rule, you got Cam Newton still there. That's all up in the air. Who's your quarterback? Is it Newton? Is, yeah, is it he kid high Kyle on Allen? Allen? Is Will Greer? Right. Who's what, he high on out of that group? Does he want to draft his own guy? I mean, you know, so that's going to be interesting. Um, but I so I don't know what to expect. I don't know if I love the hire. I don't hate it. I just I don't, don't love it. it. Right. You know, fast forward, uh, tech, three ball, mm, mm. back iron. <gasps> oh, another. Th- uh, uh, okay, yeah, halftime, mm. Baylor, um, 21, Texas Tech, 18. Tune in Good game. The, Rock tune fight. In look who's talking. We might have the end of that. But, yeah, uh, but yeah dude, uh, rule, you said it best. You don't hate the hire, but honestly, if you fast forward 10 years or fast forward five years, is, is that going to be your guy that you just mm. – backed up the brains truck for i don't know um, i don't know producer sam thought about taking up coaching in his free time after that contract it's just a long contract yeah. for someone like zach said who's never put pl- who's never coached at this level and it's an entirely different game i mean imagine this right you wake up one year and you're coaching charlie brew and the next year you're waking up and you got cam Newton. like those guys are completely different Dude, personalities grown man. no one knows who charlie yeah. brewer is no no one hasn't no one has ever heard that man talk the the thing is it's, it's a total authoritarian in college football, You're it's right. not so much in the NFL. These are grown men personalities that have grown coaches men. have to compromise. Yeah. Coaches have to compromise. Yeah. They have to wage bets and they have to yeah. And it'll be interesting. Now I think he'll I think he'll be relatively successful because yeah. I think he's proven that he can coach men. Yeah, but I think so. Too. He can coach boys. Great can leader. He coach men. Great Seven leader. years. Seven years. Why not four? <laughs> I, I started easy. I mean, gosh, yeah. Three. And not only that, they also had to pay Baylor six million dollars to buy him out of his contract. Right. So, yeah. well, listen. This, if, if, if you're Matt Rule, you just passed up Dabo Sweeney and, and Nick Saban in in earnings. You're, yeah, you you're know? making more money than that. Right. And if you're if you're Matt Rule, read this little nugget on the Twitter feed, the Twitterverse. Uh, if you're Matt Rule, you're at Temple. You started. Your salary was six hundred fifty eight <laughs> grand for the year. Now your monthly salary is six hundred sixty eight. Who's this grand. man's wife? So, oh, my, geez, my goodness, Louise, she's the we're, happiest woman. We're moving to Charlotte. We're gonna coach the Panthers. Uh, Cam Newton, Kyle Allen, or Will Greer? That's the question. That will be interesting to see. But, Seriously though, that's yeah. the question. It really is. It really is the question. Who's Rules Guy? Who Did is like, Rules Guy? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Another another weird sort of deal, and, and you know we don't want to beat it to death. The talking heads and the pundits have beat it to death out there, but like Mike McCarthy. So we had just like we had been zeroed in on this guy the whole time, and yeah. this is just our guy, producer Sam. Is this wait, be- wait, wait? Before you go in, I also saw a report today, and I think reporting is becoming just a joke in America. In Who can sports, get to Twitter sports first? Universe report: Cowboys likely would not have fired Jason Garrett if they didn't like any of the coaching candidates available. Yeah, I mean, I, I would think. You probably wouldn't fire your guy if you didn't like any other of the options, right? It's common it's sense. So how that works. Why is that a report? All right. Why is that a headline? Anyway, sorry. I just wanted to throw that nugget out there. Go ahead, producer. Yeah, well, Sam. luckily, we did find uh, – believe it or not, there was a coach out there better than Jason Garrett. Uh, who would have thunk that? Mike McCarthy. I think Stephen Ace put it actually pretty well. It was a safe pick. I don't um, 
it, it was kind of surprising to me because I would have thought Jerry Jones would have gone for a little bit more flash. Um, but I you don't, don't like him to take more risks there. I don't. Jerry Jones built on risk. I know, and I, and that's why I was surprised. But yeah. listen, this man has won a Super Bowl, and he has playoff win uh, experience. Now, what does he bring to the table that Jason Garrett doesn't? I mean, this guy is not considered to be a savant in all things offense and defense. This guy isn't very creative. One thing that I think does help him is that Dak Prescott and – Aaron Rodgers are somewhat polar opposites where Aaron mm. Rodgers is very much someone who has an opinion about how the teams run and ultimately will give you that feedback. And he's not exactly a, a, a team player from the yeah. sense that yeah. if he's not happy, the team's not happy. Dak Prescott is all about the team. He's never complained in his entire life. And even when he's going, mm-hmm. uh, he's had a very good season and no contract and snubbed a, a pro bowl. Um, this man is just uh, he he is just spitting out generosity and mm-hmm. thanks and the I mean one of the most humble people in the NFL. I think that will be a big part of uh, McCarthy's um, ability to coach this team better. Yeah, um, but uh, it it'll be an, it'll be interesting. I, I do wonder you know what happens to our our defensive coordinator and offensive coordinator. We we could end up in a situation where both stay. Um, I don't think that that's likely, but it, it, it'll yeah. be interesting. Kellen Moore, get him out. He, I, I don't, I know the offense is ranked not like a top ranked offense in the league. I just, I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed by Kellen Moore's play calling when it matters. I think they were the number matters. one offense in the league, weren't they? Yeah, they, they were, they were great offensively. They also had, had, they, they were put, they're put together brilliantly, quite frankly. GM's done an amazing job. Best offensive line in football. You got a great quarterback at a good price. You got your running back. You got your top receiver with yeah. your couple Cobb and Gallup on the outside as well. Uh, you're Witten. I don't think he's that good, but you got an okay tight end and defense yeah. is stout. So yeah. uh, if you're McCarthy, opinion, you have to be pretty. Pumped. I just I just watch Cowboys games and I just think like they put up a lot of points and a lot of yards against teams that weren't good, and then against the teams that were good. You saw the offense get stagnant, quite frankly, because I think the play calling was just not good in the big in the moment. So yeah. can McCarthy bring in a guy who is more experienced? Because Kellen Moore was like a backup quarterback two years ago. One thing I can, I would say about Kellen Moore is that when it came to late decision making, I do know uh, sources have said that that offensive uh, the offensive play calling did ultimately run through Jason Garrett when it was all said and gotcha. done. And there yeah. were okay. moments there were moments where we saw, you know, timeouts called on fourth down or timeouts called on, on uh, third and one and Kellen Moore and Jason Garrett are talking. And we all know who's talking to sure. Dak Prescott in the helmet at that point. Yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, did I love Kellen Moore throughout the season? No. The first three weeks we thought that this guy was A you know, the next. Yeah. God, I, I don't know if I would snub him. Next so Joe early, Brady. But who, who knows? Dude. Yeah. It, Safe pick, good pick from the Cowboys. He slept at Jerry Jones' house. He had he broke bread with the man. Um, he's now the head coach of America's team. Good luck to you, McCarthy. Good luck to good you. Luck. Pressure's on. Good luck. Uh, that job, it can be a really great job. It can be a really terrible mm. one. Um, it's a tough job. You're under the microscope. Scrutiny. But you're not going to know any of the hot takes, any of the juice, unless you tune in to look who's talking. Yeah, we you're appreciate not know. everyone because we're back in our seats. We're back in our element. Um, Consistent weeks coming up. We've got consistency is key. The and end we, of football, you know, college basketball, moving into the NBA. If you're a basketball guy, yeah, get ready. Buckle get ready. Your, oh, your it's seatbelt. coming. It's coming. So 2020, big year ahead for Look Who's Talking. www.lwtpod.com. Click shop, order a tea, shipping by yours truly, Zach, Zach, and producer Sam will come to your doorsteps, break bread with you, and give you a shirt. Uh, Love you guys. Excited to be back. Happy 2020. Listen in on Wednesday mornings. Follow us on Instagram. Look who's talking.